There is nothing I love more than an amazing meal with high quality meat cooked at home because let's be honest, eating out is so expensive. And you also know that eating out is the number one budget buster. That is why I am so glad I found ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a premium meat subscription service dedicated to delivering high quality, grass fed, and grass finished beef, organic chicken, pork raised crate free, and wild caught seafood directly to your doorstep with free shipping always. You even get exclusive member deals, recipes, and a variety of high-quality cuts at an amazing price. New users will receive their choice of two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken thighs, or one pound of premium steak tips for a year. Use code ETM and get $20 off your first box at butcherbox.com. Last night, we made a beef stew with meat from ButcherBox, and you can taste the difference. It was so satisfying and delicious. And all of our friends that were over for a dinner party, they raved at how good it was. So do yourself a favor and eat better this year with the best meat and seafood on the planet delivered to your door. ButcherBox is offering my listeners their choice of a weeknight meal essential, three pounds of chicken thighs, two pounds of ground beef, or one pound of premium steak tips, for free in every order for a year. Plus, get $20 off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com slash etm and use code etm to choose your free offer and get $20 off. When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet, finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. You can't avoid disasters, no matter how hard you try. Whether they happen at your house or outside your house, you're going to come face to face with an emergency one day or another. But my question to you is, are you prepared? Millennial Money with Shauna Compton Gaines. It will expand your brain. How do you not die in an emergency? Well, this episode was inspired by an Ask Shauna question that came in from James and Melissa, who wanted to know how much money they needed to spend this year to truly be prepared for an emergency. So I thought, well, that's a great question. Why don't we just devote an entire episode to this? Because we love to spend money on the stuff that excites us, of course. But spending money to get ready for emergencies... It's just not sexy at all. But you know what is sexy? Getting yourself prepared. The good news is that you just don't need to spend a lot of money to be prepared. But friends, I want being prepared to be a goal on your list for this year. And today's guest, Lori March, is my go-to girl for all things preparedness. She's the brains behind Know How Studios, and you might have even seen her mug on the cooking channel and HGTV. Okay, I want you to sit back. I want you to roll up your sleeves because in today's episode, Lori is getting us prepared for anything that is going to come our way. So real quick, before we dive into the podcast episode, just a quick reminder that if you've got goals you want to smash in 2019, you need to run and sign up for our free four-week email challenge, The Money Game Plan, before February 4th. You're going to set a goal, you're going to get a strategy in place, and you're going to have a lot of positive motivation from me, but more than anything, you're going to empower your money to go places this year. So sign up in the link in the show notes or head on over to bit.ly slash mmoneygp. That's bit.ly slash mmoneygp. I'll see you in the challenge. So Lori, we're going to start off with a bang question. How do we not die in a natural disaster? I mean, that's an important question if you want to make it through, right? It's a big deal. I feel like a couple of life skills and a couple of cool supplies and you can totally not die in a disaster. 
yeah, you know, I think when I'm thinking about natural disaster and preparedness and things like this, you are obviously the expert at this. And I think it's so interesting because human nature, we don't want to talk about danger. We don't want to talk about risks. We don't want to talk about all of these really real elements that exist in all of our lives, whether it's money or it's preparedness. Why do you think as humans, that's just a topic we want to avoid at all costs? It's a good question. I feel like most of us are really looking to live our our happiest moments. And so we stay away from the stuff that hurts. We stay away from sad. We stay away from fear. Uh, we don't want to live it. We we want to like relish, especially lately. I feel yeah. like our parents dug into that crap a lot more and we want to be happy. You know, we want to feel good. We want to r- reward ourselves and I think the key to that is sometimes rewarding yourself for for slogging through the crap you didn't want to do is <laughs> is potent, you know? You can give yourself that $5 coffee after you change the batteries in your smoke detector and just like celebrate yourself, you know? Yeah, I think I think it's interesting because even when we talk on the podcast about money and being prepared around money, there are topics that people soak up a lot. I notice those episodes, people are downloading and sharing those types of episodes. And yet it's this topic that still feels somewhat taboo. How can you bring that awareness to your situation when maybe you know you're not as prepared as you should be, but almost you don't you don't know how to have that conversation or start that conversation? I think it's okay to say I am preparedness level zero. <laughs> I know nothing. And and to to kind of correct what you said earlier, I'm not an expert. I am an enthusiast and we care. And we've spent an awful lot of time helping teach people how to do how-tos in uh, the DIY world. And I feel like there's a huge correlation between being capable of doing DIYs and being capable of getting ready for emergencies and, and being a little more buttoned up. So... I'm not an expert, but I don't think any of us has to be. You don't have to, you know, be able to build your own wilderness for it tomorrow. Some of these things are, are so basic. And if we can just get out of our own way and stop being afraid or procrastinating and just do a thing or two, it really is as simple as finding a flashlight in your house. Do you have a flashlight? I actually do. do we you? have multiple flashlights. Where, that where is, are they? Where are your flashlights? That is not because of me. That is because of my husband. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if it was up to me, we would probably be not prepared for anything. But yeah. we have – this is going to be a quiz now, right? Yes. We have flashlights next to bed stands. Okay. We have flashlights under the kitchen sink. There is – probably a flashlight in the garage. See, I'm already failing at this. <laughs> no, actually you're winning because you knew where the one by your bed was. Yes. That's important because a lot of disasters happen while you're sleeping. Yes. And we have fire extinguishers. Ooh. We have two fire extinguishers, which again is pure credit of Jeff and none of my own. Yeah. And uh, we Spouses actually- are awesome. They are. They are awesome. They help you be- you know, touchy, deal with touchy subjects sure. that maybe you don't can. necessarily want to deal with yourself. I think sure. living in a place where there's earthquakes, we grew up knowing you got to put shoes under a bed and things like that. So that's Do you have shoes under your bed? I do have shoes <gasps> under my bed. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I know, right? See, and I think you started this chat maybe feeling like you weren't that prepared, but you're already right. doing a lot of simple things. And a chunk of preparedness is just that simple. Yeah. It's not like you had to go buy the shoes. Right. You, you just didn't have to, to put, spend a dollar on that preparedness, actually, which is great for your budget. You just had to put the shoes there. You had to be mindful of things we have been talking about, have an awareness of, of the situation. But how do you approach getting prepared if you have absolutely nothing in place? Is it different if you're preparing and you live in earthquake country or you live where there's hurricanes? blizzards. Are are you approaching this topic differently or is it the same conversation? Sure. I think a lot of things are similar in that you have to be able to feed yourself and have water. So that's a basic, right? I feel like everyone should have a really good professional first aid kit in the home. Nice to have one in your car too, if you can. What makes it professional? Well, a lot of them are put together for you. Um, And some of them are a little more tactical. So they might have a couple more elements in them um, for sort of treating problems that are a little bit bigger. Um, 
some more basic first aid kits are sort of more like the bumps and bruises. And then the ones that are a little more tactical uh, could really, in sort of a triage moment, really help you with something a lot more complicated. So they tend to be around the same price. It's just really looking for what's included. But a professional one, you didn't have to put together yourself. Okay, that makes sense. So it's going to likely have the stuff that you need if you're injured or burnt or something of that nature. Yeah. Wounds, for sure. I think a lot of that is like having a first aid kit can really help you in the moment until someone more professional gets to you. I feel like that's a huge chunk of preparedness is it's not about you against the world in Armageddon. It's sometimes the services that you've come to expect might be delayed or busy somewhere else or something else more important is happening. Right. So how can you take care of yourself without being able to call 911 or until an EMT gets there to help sew up something that you cut on yourself really badly or you know what I mean? It's it's really about like taking control in the moment and knowing that you actually can do something. In most cases, you can totally do something yourself. And I think what's interesting, what you just said, it, it made me think about this, that there are those natural disasters that we that we know about, but there also could be just a disaster in your place. Sure. For instance, a couple months ago, we had this really weird experience where a bat got into our, <laughs> our condo and was flying around. And I mean, I was panicked. So I was down at the front door. I wanted nothing to do with the bat. But Jeff was in there being super brave, trying to get the bat out. But if the bat had bit him or I mean, that's just a very weird story, but it could be something that is contained in your home that doesn't affect someone else, but requires some element of being prepared that you don't think about. Sure. Like lots of people experience fires in their life and they could be as large as a wildfire that affects an entire region. Uh, They could be neighborhood specific and they actually could be just your kitchen your whole house could burn down or just you could have had a grease fire. Um, And so your level of preparedness and the level of response around you really changes. If your kitchen burned and you're out of your house, you might be able to go to your neighbor's house or your sister's house, or you have somebody in the church that you belong to that could take you in. And if it's your whole region, that's really different Mm because the number of people who are affected by the disaster really changes the response, you know? Yeah, for sure. And I know you just recently were affected by the wildfires in in Malibu and you shared how being prepared actually helped you in that situation. What was that like going through that being somebody who is into being prepared? <laughs> if that if that even You know, at some point you sort of wonder if you called the fire to yourself by having the preparedness. (laughs) We, My team and I have been working on a a preparedness course uh, because I strongly believe that we all could do a lot of small things and be a lot more prepared in our everyday life. So we've been cranking on this for a couple months to do a bunch of great research and, you know, put together some content that is easy to absorb. This stuff can get so heavy. So knee deep in the middle of this content work that we've been doing the Woolsey fire swept through and burned my beach house down. So our our structure is still there. I was able to walk in and walk around in my house. That's It's burned out. I mean- Which just sort of blows my mind because I've seen the pictures yeah. that you've posted and it, it feels strange that you could be able to still walk in the space. You know, my head goes to, well, there wouldn't be a floor or, or there wouldn't be walls, but, but you can have a fire and you could have it be completely destructive and sure. yet still be able to roam around the place. Yeah. And a lot of people, we're so blessed that this is our, this is not the home we sleep in every night, you know? Right. We did not lose every one of our belongings. This is our- family beach house. It's an, you know, a big investment that we made together. And, and I won't say I didn't cry a little, but it's, it's not the same. Um, and you know, our, our thoughts have really been with everyone who truly lost everything and it's, it just changes everything. You know, for us, we were able to come back to the space, um, and approach it and, and root through it and see if there was anything there. Um, see if we could salvage anything to your point, the the structure is still there. That's one thing you never know with a disaster, whether it's a flood or a fire. Uh, is it going to be completely gone? Like a yeah. lot of people's homes were completely leveled. There is nothing left. 
Paradise, California, most of that whole place, there is nothing left. So you can't even, there's nothing salvageable. Not even really. so you're not- Some people are, you know, I just had a chat with a friend who said his family sifted through their home after a disaster and found his grandma's diamonds. All oh my of them, gosh. Because they don't melt. Wow. Crazy, right? They found a couple, she collected teacups and they found a couple of her vintage teacups that had been in a cabinet. But they found all her rings based on the location in the home that they had been and a lot of sifting and they were able to reset them. So she had her diamond ring back. But so message to everyone, invest in diamonds, right? right? <laughs> that's just an that's just another way uh to uh husband uh, are promote, you listening? <laughs> promote diamond buying. They don't burn up in fires. They don't. <laughs> and they're shiny and we can find yeah, them. You can. At much effort, I think they put into that, but for us, the the walls were still there and the floor was there. It really does look like a set. It, I mean, it, right. it looks like a Mad Max movie. Everything is kind of melted, but the firefighters were able to use water to put out the fire. So some of our fire damage is actually water damage, you know? Right, which is not something that you would normally think about when there's fires. It's, oh, by the way, there's going to be water damage. Sure. And the water damage could completely... Uh, quickly turns into mold you. damage too, by the way. It's just an interesting layer of one of the things. We actually went back there the other day and um, I took one of my buddies who's a camera guy and I was like, I really want to share some thoughts on how I'm feeling and what it looks like and what you can expect. Because I think we don't, sh these are taboo things like debt, you know, there's- Yeah, it's a topic that you're not talking about. We don't talk about. So you might say my house burned down, it's over. But people don't really share that aftermath very often and the process and the paperwork and the phone calls and the arguments, you know, like we don't share it. It's not like here, here's a check. Thank you very much for insuring your property with us. It, it doesn't happen that fast. And, and the emotional side of losing something or the emotions in a natural disaster, just a fear of not knowing what's going to happen. I think that's where preparedness helps you potentially alleviate, not even alleviate, but helps you feel a little bit more comfortable in a strange situation. Yeah. You're out of control. I feel like when something like this happens to you, you're not in control of your life. You're not in control of your property, your feelings, your money, like all these things spiral in those moments. And so if you are emotionally grounded in the knowledge that you have a home inventory, you have photos of your belongings, you got insurance. Um, you know, we're, we're, we were lucky enough and, and it's important to me to insure our properties enough. Um, when you do those things, you feel more solid. Uh, you know that you're facing something that sucks and it's sad and it's uncomfortable but you do have a couple of those things addressed and you know it's in your back pocket. And so you come at it with a little bit of armor on almost, you know, like yeah. you have a little bit more confidence. And again, it's not our primary home. I didn't lose every single thing I own. So that's also different. But the fight is the same afterward, no matter what you're rebuilding, you're talking to insurance. Um, you know, there's a, there's a red tag on my home that the fire department put there. There's a note from the EPA about chemicals. You know, there's things you have to pay attention to. And the process afterward can be really overwhelming. So doing some things in advance to take care of yourself. By the way, you don't have to be a, a homeowner to, to have insurance. You should have renter's insurance too. Because if the person below you burns down the unit and you have an apartment and all your belongings are gone. If you didn't have that renter's insurance, you're taking care of it yourself afterwards. So, and always make sure that you have adequate insurance, right? I mean, that's something that you said you're very thankful for that yep. you had enough insurance that in a natural disaster that you were taken care of. A lot of people just choose the cheapest policy sure. until there's a problem. Right. And I mean, the same thing with car insurance, you yeah. know, you could go across the board, but. It, it's something where you don't want to cheat. It's a gamble. You, I mean, when's the last time you won when you were in Vegas? <laughs> <laughs> Never. Not very often. <laughs> Which is why I don't like Vegas. <laughs> Insurance is mafia too, you know? Like, you're, you're, you don't win. You don't win. So if your coverage is not replacement value coverage and it's something less, 
you're really um, you're gambling with your future self and your your possibilities. So really thinking in advance about knowing how to take care of yourself in any situation, these skills are not just for one little spot of your life. They work in so many other corners of your life. It, it all really, it matters, you know, just do yeah. the homework, I guess. Yeah. We feel lucky that we did some of that homework now. And as we're facing doing all this work with the insurance company and, and rebuilding, we've got you know, it's almost like you have an ace in, in the hole, kind of. I did the in- inventory, so it's there. I know what that is. I don't have to emotionally go through and remember every single spatula in the kitchen to get recompensated for it. And that's something I've talked about on the podcast before, the the inventory idea. But you might be able to have a little different take or shed a, some extra tips on that. How can you painlessly go about taking inventory of your house and store it in a way that it's there when you need it. I mean, I think the first thing you can do is grab a smartphone, a folding table and invest in a rolling rack because you need to open up your closet and photograph your belongings. A lot of people have a chunk of their their belongings in their closet. You know, if you have yeah. a collection of purses or if you're somebody who has a ton of nicer clothing, you're not going to remember what it was. But if you have a photograph of it, you can get compensated for it. So folding tables so you can spread your belongings out and shoot them. A a true inventory should take you a couple of hours if you do it right. Uh, So are you photographing literally everything or are you just taking maybe like a video of your closet? How detailed does it need to be? I think a video is better than nothing, but the photographs are what will give you what you need. So I stand in every corner of the room and photograph from it outward. That gives you sort of an an eagle eye view of of everything that's in the space. Um, I open drawers. I open the closet, you know, shoot all your shoes, all your jewelry, all your makeup, all your, you know, your, your inventory also will like all my food burned up that was in the house, all the things, all the dishes burned uh, there is a replacement value to those things. The spice drawer, the the refrigerator. Um, I try to also photograph if you can get out a logo for your washer or dryer, your appliances, um, you know, a model number if you can see it. Um, That's a really good tip. I wouldn't normally think about that, but you're right. If you're trying to come up with a value hindsight, of something. What was that dishwasher? Uh-uh. I don't know. I mean, it's a thousand dollar dishwasher, but they're going to tell you it was a two hundred dollar dishwasher and compensate you for that. So, if you don't have proof of the things, if you have a coffee maker, is it a Ninja coffee maker or is it a Breville eighteen dollar coffee maker? You know, they're always going to compensate you for the lesser amount. So, anywhere that you have um, a nicer piece of furniture, a luxury good, a nicer your pots and pans, perfect example. You have a sixty dollars skillet, or do you have a ten dollars Goodwill special? Well, they're only <laughs> going to pay you for the pot Goodwill special or a pan. <laughs> so yeah. you don't have to go crazy over it, but I do think the places, your television, you know, your AV technology, you might not remember what you had, and you have it in every room. Sometimes you have more than one TV, right? You don't think of those things. Your appliances in your bathroom, like. Primers and hair, like my blow dryer was wow. expensive. I wouldn't have thought of that. I, I would not have said either. blow dryer, but I did buy a nice one a couple of years ago and I still have it. Your fan, you probably have a nice fan or a heater somewhere in your house, stuff like that. You would never think of it, but you're not going to get compensated for it unless it's on a list somewhere. So I just use my smartphone. Um, I drop everything into a folder. I like to use Dropbox or Evernote. They're both a great way to organize things. Um, And you also should be saving it not just on your computer, but Dropbox and Evernote are in the cloud. So it's going to be there for you later. If if your computer burns up or (laughs) something happens to your computer, then you have that, that backed up someplace where you can access it. So exactly. That would be the worst case scenario. <laughs> you only right. back up. Don't to- forget to take a picture of the computer. <laughs> Don't forget to back up your phone. <laughs> right. Yes. Exactly. So, and then separately, I think it's nice to put it on sort of a USB drive and 
um, as you get to a point where you're a little more prepared, you start to think about this is in one location and maybe a fire safe. Uh, you put those things that matter most to you, any deeds and documents and paperwork, will, um, you know, things that, that prove who you are in case your home does burn to the ground and your wallet was in it. Um, those are things that you can tuck into a fire safe and you can put that um, inventory on a little USB stick drive in there. And it's just, it's there. Um, sometimes people store them on site. I know some friends who store them in a lockbox off site somewhere or at a friend's house. I mean, they have tech now where it could actually be like a thumbprint to unlock it. So, wow. you know, you can protect it. If you, if you have, if you have a really fancy art collection and you're afraid that, you know, putting it all in one place tells somebody what you've got. I mean, that's accurate. That is, yeah. Right. But you have the ability to lock these things down now and make them a lot more safe. So password protected folders on your computer or in your Dropbox. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom. Like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, Right. For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news... Well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps, but I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. It gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. Financial anxiety, anyone? Yeah, you're not alone. But worrying about it, it doesn't help. Earnin does. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. You just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck. Then you can access up to $100 per day as you work and leave an additional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. So how would you spend the money you get from Earnin? Well, honestly, my hubby and I have been feeling a little bit disconnected lately. That's what happens after you've been together about 12 years. So I would spend the money on a special date night with dinner and maybe bowling, you know, to bring back some of that giggly excitement that we both felt at the beginning. Make Earnin a part of your financial routine and join Earnin's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earnin, I think about financial stability, security, gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earnin today, spelled E-A-R-N-I-N, in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in Talkin, T-A-L-K-A-N, money under podcast when you sign up. It will really help the show. Talkin money under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earnin.com slash TOS for details. 
Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust, member FDIC. Wow, those are amazing tips. We haven't even got into the preparedness <laughs> stuff yet. But that, but is, that is preparedness. It is, and it's really, really important, I think, for everyone to do regardless. So I know we're sitting in front of uh, some different various goodies <laughs> that might go into somebody's preparedness. You call it backpack. So walk me through a little bit about how are you thinking about what are the different products or you know, stuff that you need to put in a a kit for yourself to be prepared? And how would you go about knowing what is right for you? Right. It's, it's a giant question. (laughs) Yeah, I know. I just asked you like the $50 million question. It's a great question. I think most preparedness begins in your, your living space. Um, And most things that go sideways are things that you'll be dealing with at home. So it, there's a lot um, out there about how to take things with you and be prepared to, to on the go to be leaving. Um, a lot of people actually call that book bag a bug out bag um, or your sort of uh, emergency escape kit, right? These are the things you need to leave your home with. Well, unless you're running away from a hurricane or a snowstorm that's going to be extremely damaging or a wildfire, um, lots of things that go wrong you're actually better to just shelter in your house. So a lot of our preparedness lives at home and you just have to start by thinking about your risks. What are the things that could happen? Well, number one, the power could go out, right? Sure. Hey, that means there's no Netflix. So it's nice to have a book or two laying around. That could be preparedness. What is that? (laughs) Right? Well, what if your iPad couldn't charge or your Kindle and you couldn't read? I can't imagine. It would be rough, right? (laughs) Hey, a solar charger would get you through and you could put it in the sun. Every single day, the sun would come back up again, right? So you could be charging that Kindle or that iPad. You could still have access to all your digital stuff. Or, you know, at night, you need to make sure that you can see, right? So candles, matches, these are all things that are nice flashlights, great to start with. These things are so unsexy, aren't they? They're very unsexy. Like not one of these things jumped out at you and was like, let's start a Pinterest board. <laughs> About it. flashlights and You're not solar on. panels. No, right? no, but I would be if I really needed it. Right. In or the sure, moment. I'd be like, oh, Lori told me if I would have had this thing, I would yeah. be in a completely different situation now. Yeah. It's not sexy, but I will tell you when you had the thing you needed, you feel smug. You feel so self-satisfied when you had that flat. It happened to me the other day. Uh, the power went out. I happened to be in the bathroom. I was just about to pee. <laughs> That's the worst place. The power went out and I had a flashlight in there. And I left that bathroom with a flashlight in my hand and like the most self-satisfied look on my face, I'm sure, while I was headed to the breaker box to figure out what went wrong. Because I had the damn flashlight in the bathroom. <laughs> like, when does that happen? I mean, ever. And you found the flashlight, which is the other key. It's where I left it. Right. That's the other thing. <laughs> you know, part of preparedness is if, especially if you're in a couple, you got to tell the other person where the flashlight is. Right. One person can't be prepared alone. That would be a, another disaster, I think. It would, it would be a <laughs> lot less fun to have to root around and find the things because you thought your spouse might have gotten them. But, you know, preparing if you, if more than one person uses your home it's great to have that communication so that everybody knows where the flashlight is, right? Right. It's important. So what about things like food and water? If, if we're in our house for an extended period of time, how do we prepare those sorts of things? Is there better things to have than sure. others? This is a thing you could make as simple or complicated as you want. So at the most basic in your home, it's great to have peanut butter and crackers, tuna fish, stuff that you could potentially just make without having to heat or cook, you know, no boiling, no, no, you didn't have to use any appliance. Easy stuff. Yeah. Uh, Cereal, you know, granola bars, uh, trail mix, soup that if you really wanted to, you could eat it out of a can if you had to, you know, there's just things that you can consume that don't require a ton of prep. These are great things to start with for your kit. If we had cereal in our house for our preparedness kit, we would have to seriously hide it, to hide it. <laughs> or it would be gone. <laughs> you know, my trick for that is I put it on a, a upper shelf I can't reach without a ladder. That is a good trick. Yeah. Yeah. 
I have busted into my preparedness kit recently uh, when I ran out of coffee one morning and grabbed these. Actually, I put it here on purpose so you can see this. This is instant coffee, which is kind of sacrilege to most people, uh, except what do they say? The in in the kingdom of the blind, the one eyed man is king. Listen, That's... when you run out of coffee and you find instant coffee packets, you are king. Right. So or I at saw least some... you've scratched your <laughs> coffee itch for the moment. <laughs> yeah. But this is a perfect example. So if the power went out, I tend to consume coffee. I grind the beans myself. I plug a grinder in and I grind the beans and then I put it into my coffee maker. Those two things use electricity. So if the power is out, I can't grind the beans. We can't really make coffee with like the bean without the grind. So this is pre-ground. Um, I can actually just pour this into cold water if I'm sort of coffee jonesing and Desperate. sad and really need it. I've done this before on a job site where I just really wanted a coffee. There's no hot water anywhere. I just poured it into a water bottle. I drank it. I lived. I lived to tell another day. And so did my crew, by the way. I didn't kill anybody. <laughs> so if you're if you're a coffee junkie, obviously it sounds ridiculous, but yeah. you should probably have some instant coffee. You're, lying around. you're not a coffee person. I know this because yes. yeah, I can tell. <laughs> I, um, I cannot is, relate. This is a great example. If I was making a, a book bag to go out into the world in case of emergency, you bet your ass I'd have a couple of these in there because part of emergencies is also about knowing that you're without all of your comforts. If something really goes sideways, you have to change your life for a couple of days or a couple hours or for a while. You know, people who are uh, out of their homes for hurricanes, they're creature comforts, the things they're used to that made their life good can be gone in a minute. So something as simple as having the drink you drink all the time available to you, or, uh, you know, if you're somewhere and you have it like hurricanes, if you haven't been able to bathe in a while or take a shower, having these wipes become so important. This is like a shower, one shower individually in wrapped in a package that you can bust out sometime in a public restroom, do a full wipe down and feel so much more comfortable. So no one thing saves your life. But in the moment when you're not okay, things like this could make you so much more comfortable and make you feel okay when you're not okay. You know, I think that's kind of part of what people miss about preparedness. You're not going to know. You can't read the world. You don't know what's coming. Right. But having a couple of things that you know how to use that you have in a safe place uh, and have, have a couple skills, you know, these things really get you 10 steps ahead if something does go sideways. So, and even as, I mean, we're both fairly strong women, I could probably say that pretty confidently, but even being a strong woman, there's still a lot of things that at least me, I don't inherently know how to do. Sure. I don't know how to start a fire. I don't, I don't know some of these things that maybe could help in a situation of disaster. So for women particularly, I mean, I just feel like the preparedness conversation is maybe even more important. And that may be, I don't think that's making a sweeping negative remark. It's just there's a lot of things that we tend to either let a boyfriend or a spouse or a friend do for us that in a moment of being needing to be prepared, if we live by ourselves, that sure. we would need to know how to do those things. Yeah. And it's not that you couldn't figure it out. This is here on purpose, this cute little Zippo, because um, matches, a lot of them, when they get wet, you can't use them. So you might have matches sitting around, but if you're, you know, if it's pouring or if you're hurricane, you know, riding out a storm somewhere, and if part of what you needed to do was light a match somewhere or you've gone out, if your matches get wet, you can't use them. So it's having some of the right stuff for what comes your way. We don't really get hurricanes here in LA. So water logging things is not necessarily what I need to worry about. Uh, right. We have earthquakes, right? We have wildfires. So the things that we think about can be a little bit different than the things that you would think about if you're on the coast and you need to get out of your home quickly if there's something sort of barreling your way in the next couple of days. So in a moment, you could totally make a fire. I know you could. You really could. <laughs> I'm sure I could if, if it was like, you know, but imagine how good die. you would feel about it if you had done it one time before you needed to. Oh, it, it's like everything. You would feel so empowered that it's you just could do like it. your fire extinguisher. Have you ever pulled the pin on it? 
I have not, but I probably should. Yeah. <laughs> That'd probably be a good idea. Maybe. Maybe. Right? What would it feel like to know? What does it feel like when you pull the pin? What comes out? What do you have to do? Is it heavy? Can you hold it? If you had to point it at your stove and put out a fire, would you feel comfortable doing it? You could figure it out. You surely would figure it out. I know you would. But some of these things you can actually try in advance and then you feel like a ninja because you've done it. Right. You know? So why don't we, I mean, I know with with your company, Know How Studios, you're creating resources to help people be able to touch and feel things and to be able to be familiar. But why don't we have these conversations? I mean, I know it's because we don't like to, but how come we're not in situations where maybe if we're in the Boy Scouts, we've been in the Boy Scouts or something like that, but I was in the Brownies and I... (laughs) (laughs) I was a Brownie too until I got kicked out. I don't think that I learned... No offense to the Brownies. I'm not sure I learned a lot of life skills. You know, I say this about money too. We don't teach people about money. We just sort of throw you out there and then, okay, you got to figure it out. But right. this is important stuff that you should be able to touch and, and come in contact with. And yet we don't. It's a good parallel, actually. Um, and I think it's partially because instant gratification is way more fun. I admit it's way more fun to go to the mall and shop and buy things. It's way more fun to eat a fancy lunch somewhere or go see a movie you know, rarely do we wake up and say, today is the day I am going to do my home inventory and top to bottom. Like we don't really, we don't reward ourselves enough for those moments. So we don't, we have not, we don't receive that. Like, what is it? The serotonin spike. Right. We didn't like the glee of having accomplished something. We don't pat ourselves on the back enough for that. It's like the checkbook balance, you know, do you know what's in your numbers? Have you looked? Do you know what's in your savings account and what you owe? Like, are you like covering your eyes and not looking? Preparedness is really the same. So I think we all have to celebrate each other and ourselves when we do something, anything, anything. It, I agree. Literally put the flashlight next to the bed, put a, put a pair of shoes you don't have to tie under your bed. Um, if you sleep nude, put some pants down there too, <laughs> please, guys and please gals. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> My friend Cindy says she uh, has a bra in her nightstand because she her her life fear is that she's going to be in an emergency situation without a bra. I'm like, <laughs> girl, <laughs> I believe you. Like, if that's what you're worried about, everybody's preparedness begins somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it really does. So th- that is a step. You will know that you have the shoes under your bed and the flashlight. And and I urge everybody to to check your smoke detector. It's really a real powerful thing to have a smoke detector and a carbon monoxide detector. There's a lot of things in your home that don't smell that can kill you. And a carbon monoxide detector can stop uh, some really sad things from happening, you know? Especially if you could do something that would It's stop 20 it. bucks. Right. $20. My aunt almost died from a, a leak and you just don't know. You literally just fall asleep and don't wake up with carbon monoxide poisoning. And and I think that's the good point that um, we've talked about this before, but you don't have to spend a lot of money. So it's not like you need thousands of dollars to get a few things or right. to feel prepared. Sometimes it's even the stuff that you have. It's just about putting it in a better location or in a location you know. But uh, I mean, you talk about this more than I do, but it, it shouldn't cost you a ton of money to get a few things, right? Sure. It doesn't have to. Sometimes the simplest way is when you go to the grocery store, adding on a couple things. Um, Toilet paper is a preparedness tool. Oh, yeah. Right? Don't be stuck without it. That would be bad. But hey, if you're in your home for two weeks and you can't get out for whatever reason, um, you know, the the normal standard things you run out and grab, you might not be able to get. Amazon might not be able to get to you. So, you know. God forbid. Right? (laughs) (laughs) I, I can't get my shipment in two days. What right. is going on? Can I get that toilet paper prime? <laughs> right. And now you're telling me I can't read my iPad or whatever. No. I mean, life is just will cease. Period. I'm just kidding. But Period. but in all honesty, these are things that we're very used to having in our world. And when they're not, it's it's a very it's uncomfortable experience and you feel scared and out of your element. Yeah. So I'd love to know. Tell me a little bit about Know How Studios and, and kind of how you 
came to the preparedness? Like, why is this a topic that you are so passionate about? Know How Studios is a project that we launched um, actually almost two years now uh, with several other people that are also really invested in um, using our creative skills for good. Uh, I just feel like there are so many things that we've lost in the march of technology, the ability to do things with our hands, um, life skills that people used to know. We kind of call them grandma skills. Um, <laughs> it could be canning or for some people it could be sewing, um, whittling, uh, I don't know, you know, making things, uh, bartering is a grandma skill, trading with your neighbors, growing a garden is one of the most powerful grandma skills. It's the ability you have to provide for yourself and take care of yourself. Resilience. I mean, this is big, you know, resilience is bouncing back faster. Life will come at you. It will. Um, and, you know, we've all experienced that in lots of different ways. So for us, Know How is a creative venture where we get to really explore some of the things that we all wish we knew more about. And some of them are, are really fun, too. Like uh, one of our team members, Sam, is is learning all about whiskey and bourbon and scotch. And sometimes it's a journey down, you know, down into a glass, right, where you're discovering uh, a passion for something. You could be learning calligraphy. You know, for us, it's really all about your curiosity. Yeah. Right? Like follow your nose into something that's not a screen. Find something that speaks to you and do it and do it with us. We want to celebrate you. If you learned how to cook and you're a terrible cook, you learned you didn't burn something for the first time. I want to know, you know, I want to be there to jump up and down and celebrate you doing that. Because one day when I learn, how to, I mean, for me personally, there's a hundred things I want to learn, but I want to learn how to, how to, you know, truly survive outside by myself if I need to and camp for days or, or change a tire. Yes. There's things I want to know and there's no, there's no school for it necessarily. Um, there's definitely classes here and there and people who teach it, but we want to create a community where we all celebrate each other uh, in the things that don't live in our computer or our phone. I mean, ironically, we share these things together on social networks because that's how we all talk. But one of our biggest goals with Know How is to get in the same room. And so this is putting people together in classes uh, from across the country, you know, learning how to be more prepared together. So preparedness courses, um, classes, and and things we can go through together on how to have a more mindful home, how to make better decisions, uh, how to make less waste. I think all of us are super invested in that, you know, realizing we make a lot of trash. What can I cut down? I think there's a lot of stuff we can cut out that I won't even feel. Things that weren't didn't even affect my life. Like, what a wonderful place to start. It wasn't a loss. Like, I didn't suffer. I just stopped using that much plastic, <laughs> you know? Wow, that wasn't hard. Paper towels. I've almost completely stopped using paper towels. And I don't miss them. Unless the dog barfs. I still use paper towels for that. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> There's like a dog barf. I'm not going to clean it well, up. Well, there the are, you know, some, but... some reasons, yes, to use, yeah. to use things like that. Well, But you can diminish so many things without... I think people are afraid these things are going to affect their life so much. Like it's such a loss, you know, or a sacrifice. It doesn't really have to be. Yeah. Wow. Well, we have talked about so much today. I feel like this is one of those podcast episodes that you should <laughs> bookmark and come back over and over again because there's all these little really gems in this podcast. But if you could leave the listeners with one tip or one takeaway or one thing to focus on as we're in the new year, we're in 2019 and if we could spend just a minute thinking about preparedness, what would you tell them? One thing, I think you just have to start. It's not about perfection. It's about progress. So for me, it would be put the shoes under your bed. When you're at the grocery store, get a couple of extra cans of something. How many gallons of water are in your house? Add a couple more. Um, do you know what your breaker box looks like? Maybe learn how to, you know, it's not hard. Flip a breaker here and there. You know, there's simple. If you can hang a picture, you can be more prepared in your life. It's it's not that complicated. 
And it's really just um, kind of doubling down on some of the stuff you're already doing. So the the number one thing I would say is just start. Start anywhere. Um, and you don't have to spend any money necessarily, right? The shoes under your bed are free. Maybe. Unless you want to go out and buy a new pair of shoes, but I'm not going to you, you know, can hold that, that against you. <laughs> <laughs> and I, honestly, that's an interesting point. I do think sometimes the adoption of a habit has to inspire you to make a change. So that's partly why I think it's okay to buy the stuff. If the stuff is going to help you make your life change, buy the stuff. I bought really cute um, water bottles, so I would stop buying plastic water bottles. There, I spent money on them. I did not amortize the cost and think about how long, it, how many water bottles. I bought the cute thing and it helped me change my behavior. So it's not about, you know, giving up on all the stuff you love and convenience. Sometimes it is a little more inconvenient. But if you love the cute water bottle you bought, you're way more likely to adopt the habit. And sometimes getting there is what matters, right? Adopt the habit. Go buy the cute water bottle. Sorry. You, you can balance the budget. <laughs> I'll tell people, go buy the water bottle because that's sometimes how we make change, you know? I think that is just so powerful. Well, Lori, this has been incredible. Again, like I said, so many gems in this episode, but tell listeners where can they go to find out more about Know How Studios and about all the preparedness stuff that you're working on? The simplest place to find us is knowhowstudios.com. Also, our social handles are all at knowhowstudios. We love to hear from people. We want to know what their questions are, uh, what they've already prepared. If you've got a flashlight next to your bed, I want to know about it. You know, if there's a habit that you want to learn and we, you know, we want to support people learning great things, we'll be your biggest cheerleader because I think that's something I want to wake up and read every day on my social feeds is people being nice to each other and supporting each other and learning new stuff. So knowhowstudios.com at knowhowstudios and we'll, we'll be there to support you. Hey, thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Remember to subscribe to the podcast. It's absolutely free and you'll make sure you never miss an episode of Millennial Money. You can also listen to all our episodes on Spotify, Google Play, iTunes, Stitcher, and Pandora. We've all spent more time with family lately. It can feel like old times. But your mind is on the future, too, and what you can do to shape it. At Sandy Spring Bank, we work with clients to help them grow and protect their money with wealth management, trust services, and insurance, so they can enjoy today and ultimately pass along their wealth. We believe real banking is a conversation. Let's talk about your dreams. Visit sandyspringbank.com wealth. Wealth and insurance products are not FDIC insured, not guaranteed, and may lose value.